Good afternoon, Catch Staff. It's Dr. Mark Tracy coming to you with my weekly message. Back again. Hope you all had a great week. I know uh, one of the things that I saw this week was just some excellent, excellent work um, as I have toured the building and just been out observing what's going on. So I'm continuing to be impressed by you all each and every day. You guys are working extremely hard. This this time period between um, the winter break and spring break, you know, traditionally being kind of the longest period of time. Except for that last week of school, <laughs> but you know, you guys are doing a great job of making sure we're maximizing our time on task and utilizing it, especially you know the limited time we have with our kids to make sure we're providing the quality education. So I just want to say thank you for doing a great job. Um, from uh, kind of the weekly thing that I talk about is usually I'm showing pictures of classrooms and what I saw during walkthroughs. Similar to what I did with the parents, I just want to highlight and and, and say how much I appreciate from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade, the displaying of student work. You know, for me, I reflect back to when I was a student and how proud I was when my teacher displayed my work or my parents put it on the on the refrigerator or wherever your you know your parents displayed your work as a kid. And, uh, and I think when we do that here it provides our students with a boost of confidence and it's really exciting to see that for them. But it also has more meaning for us as an organization. You know, not only is it a great thing for our kids to see their quality work produced and, and displayed for a sense of pride, it also allows others to see what quality things you're doing. And you never know what that might spark an idea from one of your peers. But also imagine as a third grader, you're walking to the cafeteria and you swing by the fifth grade hallway and you get to see some quality work and you can start to think about those kids thinking, wow, I can't wait to get to do that. Oh, that looks hard. Oh, that, that looks exciting. So I appreciate that opportunity for our peers to learn from one another um, and you all as peers to learn to, from one another. But I also um, see some other added benefits to this, you know, from a parent perspective, parents coming in, getting to see the quality of what's going on in our building just only enhances their commitment and excitement of sending their children to Kestrel. But we also are, we have a significant uptake in our tours, and it gets great for our future parents to see some of the quality work that goes on. And then finally, it just makes it an inviting um, um, environment. You know, um, you know, it's a school. It's great to see colorful activities and a diverse act, set of activities. Um, so I appreciate y'all doing that. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, as I've been talking, I've I've been uh, displaying some of these works. But you see work from, you know, you know, kindergarten through eighth grade. You see it in, from an academic standpoint, um, where it's reports and other things. You also see some holiday based pieces that are taken to the next level when it comes to writing samples. You see our specialists from art um, and AIG, um, you know, their work displayed. You see our ESL community being represented. You know, our counselors are part of that process. Um, you see a dance um, board. And so it's just, it's great to see that we've all embraced that. And it's not something we really strongly emphasize or talk a lot about, but it's something that is so critical to the culture of a building, but also academic success. You know, it, it empowers students and it encourages students to street seek um, higher quality work. So great job to you as teachers. Keep up the good work. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about active supervision. Um, it's one of those pieces that I, I'm going to continue to talk about. Uh, and I think in two areas, I think it's really important that we need to focus on. First and foremost, a transition in critical times during the day. It's important that we are out and about. The students are seeing us. We talked about this at the onset of the school year. It, not only just being visible, but engaging students. How your day is going? Hey, did you get that homework for me? You know, hey, how's your brother doing? How's your mother doing? <clears throat> but to engage our students during these times of transitions. You know, when I talk to kids, one of the things that they stress is that the staff care about them and they're engaged in them. And during those transition times, there's an opportunity. You know, if we're sending a group of kids for the bathroom during, uh, you know, snack time, you know, we need to make sure someone's out there supervising them from a safety perspective, but also making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing so they can get back to class and engage in learning. We have too many, um, unfortunately, we have too many minor incidents where um, increased supervision could dramatic, dramatically reduce the likelihood of those happening. But the second piece that I think we need to continue to work on and strive on is that active supervision in the classroom. If we're at the front of the desk, if we're at the front of the room on our, at our desk or not rotating, you know, I can promise you that I do the walkthrough and I sit in the back of the room. I see the, you know, the further from you, the less engaged our students sometimes become. And so it's critical. And I see as you rotate and engage students, the increased focus and the increased um, uh, rigor as far as what they're doing in the classroom. So I highly encourage you to continue to 
um, move and supervise our, our kids, it's really, really critical so that um, they're engaged and also gives you an opportunity to provide feedback, see how they're doing. It's just really important. Um, and finally, just, just as I conclude, um, this week, uh, thanks to Ms. Tone, we had a national trainer come teach us a little bit about active shooters um, on campus. Um, and what we're going to be doing is rolling out, Ms. Goff is going to be rolling out um, some new EOP or emergency operation plans as it pertains to deciphering between lockdown drills and active shooting. We know our trainer really kind of helped us see that our current lockdown process needs to be modified to better address active shooting. You know, we're going to have a multiple at lockdowns, you're coming out of level one where something's going on outside the building, we just can't leave it inside, it happens, you know, school goes on. Level two, something's going on in the hallways, a medical emergency, something along those lines, student having a, a, an emotional problem, well then we're, we're going to be continuing to work in our classrooms like, you know, nothing's happening, but, you know, we just don't, we just don't move throughout the hallways until it's clear. And then level three is maybe an upset parents in the building. There's there's some level of concern within the building and that's more of our traditional lockdown. But with an active shooting, we're gonna have a different process. And one of those key components that makes a difference is that we will be um, making announcements to provide much more clarity. You know, back in the day we say, hey, we're gonna have a soft lockdown. You're not sure what's going on. Is that somebody in the hallway having a medical emergency? Is that an upset parent? You don't know. But we're going to be providing much more clarity when it comes to those emergency drills. And that's something we learned this week as far as being more clear so that you as teachers are not focused on that piece that you can continue on your day. If it's, uh, you know, there's an incident in the community, we're going to be in a level one lockdown. You can move within the building, but you can't leave the building. You know what's going on, right? And so you know, and you understand it can move on. So we're going to be providing that training in the future staff meetings, and we'll be talking about it on an ongoing basis because ultimately we want you to be safe and want our kids to be safe. Finally, I just want to highlight the staff member of the month, and that's going to be Mr. Hensler. Um, um, Mr. Hensler, I just want to say great job for our National History Day projects. I was there. We had multiple board members and many teachers and administrators there judging those projects. 19 students qualified to go on to the regionals, and it's really great to read those projects. So I just want to say thanks to Mr. Hensler. It has a great combination of really, a, you know, all our ACE, you know, where there's an academic component, there's a cultural component, and there's also an enrichment component. So great job, Mr. Hensler. Keep up the great work to everybody. We'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great day.